Hello, everybody out there. Welcome to the inaugurating, the, the inaugural show of Return to the Purple Planet, starring me. And tonight, joining me is my, uh, the, the Purple Planet Papa himself, Mr. Harley Stroh. Harley, thank you for joining me and being such a crucial part of this, this new venture. And I couldn't think of anybody better to kick it off than you. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? It's been I haven't seen you since uh since uh Indy. Gen Con, right? Yeah, but yeah, it. yeah. No, I I am well. No, things are good. It is now fall in Colorado, and it you know, like when the seasons turn and it gets chilly, and then all of a sudden it's like way easier to stay inside and write at night. And so things oh, are really okay. lovely. We had we had snow on Sopris for the you know for the first time this season. Yeah, it's it's fun. Cool. So I can more things with you all. <laughs> you're free for more work then i can just keep piling stuff on you until the weather turns warm again <laughs> yeah oh uh, do we we're here to talk about return of the purple planet uh why and <laughs> why and not mike uh tomo adventure two and three th that that's all part of the kickstarter stuff this tonight is all about the purple planet itself so if you are tuning in watching this either live or after the fact um uh, you may have discovered uh dcc in the last couple of years and you may have heard stuff about the purple planet you may have heard rumors about this awesome box set which came out which feels like 10 years ago but i don't exactly know the date off him but it feels like a long ago but there was at a time there was a box set which was called dcc number 84 peril on the purple planet and uh the the the, the planets have aligned again and now it is time for yes for the new incarnation of Peril on the Purple Planet and so much more to be uh to be launched in a mere 120 days and change right now at this point. But we are here to kind of get things going. So so Harley, let's start from the very beginning. What the heck is DCC 84 Peril on the Purple Planet? Like there's two ways we can either talk about the setting at first, or we can talk about the adventure at first, because, you know, be, both flow into each other. What, how, how do you think sure. is the best way to, to approach this for, for the neonates well, I, I, or the people who are just interested? Well, so it was, it, you're actually, it's, it's remarkable. It's 2013, October, 2000, I checked my email. It was October, 2013 when, wow. when Joseph um, sent, sent me an email asking me if I had ever read um, Almiric. And I hadn't at the time. I had read John Carter, um, some of the John Carter stories, but I hadn't read Robert E. Howard's. Um, and so I read that and, and he was commissioning uh, at the time an adventure based on, you know, some far flung planet, you know, across the cosmos that the, the PCs get cast to. So, you know, the, the, the remarkable thing I've been going through the box set, you know, since you said you wanted to do this show and it, it, the, it was intentionally an adventure to begin with. Mm -hmm. Um, but then just but then kind of blossomed into into a setting, you know. So we had this we had this sandbox adventure to begin with, um, but you know for whatever reasons also made it a really cool place that people wanted to to hang around with after the adventure was over. I, I don't want to take the credit personally, but uh, the this because this was the one that came right after the chain coffin, if I remember correctly. There was the yeah, chain coffin, hundred percent. So Chain Coffin was yeah. like the first box set, and then under kind of similar circumstances, it started off as just an adventure, and then we were going to have like the spinny wheel puzzle, and that was it. And then once we realized we were kickstarting it, it was like, oh well, then we have to add stretch goals. Uh, so it yeah. blew up from just being that one kind of what we kind of originally pictured maybe as a twenty-four page adventure into its entire own subsetting. So I think it was kind of like Joe was watching that going, and he's well, we've got a we, here we just had like some mountain range, and here we have an entire planet to play with so i think that was kind of fed itself into like let's really blow this thing up and turn it into more than just you know just a a, a fun little romp on a faraway planet but actually into this whole kind of micro setting itself you know so i think well I think right but behind the curtain and you've you've brought this up a couple times like we always send michael curtis in first like yes. we'll uh we'll push him into the room <laughs> he'll, he'll do the he'll do the kickstarter with the box set Sweet, that was successful. All right, let's let Harley do something now. <laughs> so yeah, you're, you're, you're always the first one into the room. <laughs> yeah, you did the first spinny spinny wheel. You did the you did the first uh, box set, and so yeah, thank you for blazing the way and making uh, Purple Planet possible. But it it is it's fun. Like you you open it up, and and the adventure itself is 
is is relatively short because it's it's like a sandbox, right? And so you have you have these different locations that you can go to, and you know all these different things can take place in and around you know the plateau on the purple planet. Um, but the but the meat of the adventure, I mean, it's it's almost reminiscent of the old TSR. You know, like you think of like studying of the hill giants, where like it's it's actually pretty short. There's probably only 16 pages of adventure there in there. Once you get past, you know, the relics and the um, you know, the, the the wandering encounter tables and kind of telling you, you know, what can happen out and about on the purple planet. The the adventure itself can be done briefly because there's it's so expansive what happens in between, you know, point A and point B. Hmm. So let's for let us assuming that somebody is coming into this cold and everything. What is what is okay. the synopsis of the purple planet? You know, either you know, just kind of the general, like the thousand mile view from above. You know, it's like because it because because sure. you know, we use the term purple planet, but it refers to the event. Like we use it kind of casually to refer to the adventure itself, but it also refers to the setting in which it takes place on. You know, so um, yeah. so that's what yeah. I was saying. Yeah. It's like I think I think probably some idea of what let, let's let, let's. Can do the overview of what the purple planet setting is because once you have a kind of an understanding of what that is, the setting really the adventure then you know makes more sense put against that background. So, um, as you were saying, it's this far flung world, but there's kind of more yeah. to that. So, <laughs> you know, so somewhere across the cosmos, there's there's this this world that has just been torn and and brought to waste by war. There's um, there's this weirdling sun that casts its hateful rays down onto the planet, you know, and just just cooking the inhabitants and the and the you know the the tall towering peaks and the wastelands and the mushroom forests. And on on this plateau where the adventure takes place, there's these warring tribes of kith that have been. In, in locked in battle since time immemorial they can't even remember why they're fighting they don't regard each other as human they've or, or or kith you know as, as they refer to each other they, they you know they each each res, regards its enemy as is just like they're animals they're 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 worth putting down you know we're gonna we're gonna carry on this war because our our foes are not you know worthy of any respect whatsoever but they're locked in this what has now become this eternal war um of the kith even even as even as the you know the plateau the purple planet just devolves ever further into this just horrific wasteland and so but the the remnants of the war you know it just dots the land right and so you know there's these in the sifting sands of the waste there's there's ancient you know war relics that could be dredged up you know a, a freighted skiff is sunk in this black lake of acid you know waiting to be you know discovered and and, and brought back out and in the and in the, the very center of the plateau you know where all this is swirling around there's these towering towering mountains that just like stretch up and you know in you know towards the sky towards you know the dying sun and those 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 peaks the ancestor peaks are literally riddled with tombs um of former ascended masters of former kith warlords um and so you know these these tombs that have now been you know forgotten or left to fall into decay by the kith who no longer have any regard for you know ancestor this ancestor that ancestor those are those are are ripe for the plunder by some ambitious pcs that have been cast across the cosmos and are desperate looking to find a way home so you throw you we throw our players into this scenario um and and initially you know the the hope is that they'll 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 find a way to to get themselves back home but if you know if you think back to like when you and i were playing like isle of dread as kids right there's all you, you can explore the island, you can take all the gold and you can get out. But there's also this island that could be, you know, potentially ruled or or taken over by PCs if they if they want to, you know, start their own home base here on, on this on this far flung Isle of Dread. Well, same too with the Purple Planet. Um, there's these these kith that are beholden to these hateful, hateful tyrants. Well, you know, perhaps perhaps the kith aren't just there for slaughter. You know, perhaps we can we can raise our own war band of these of these cast out kith. You know, cast down the uh, the these these hateful uh, you know uh, rulers that have been you know pitching them in battle and, and you know and and free the planet. So there's that's that's the scope of the sandboxes. There's there, there's so much to be done. Mm. It's literally only bounded by 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 the players' ambitions and and because it's distinct and segregated. It's not it's not you know, as much as you and I love, passionately love Lankmar or, 
you know, the Forgotten Realms, there's there's a piece of you like you, you can't really burn down Lake War, or that's a real commitment. Like you could, <laughs> but it's yeah. like, oh man, <laughs> what did we just do to this thing? Whereas the Purple Planet being distinct and segregated from your campaign world, it's it leaves it completely open to transformation by the by the players they can do with it you know whatever they want um and and your your home campaign when you would if and when they ever make it back home is 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 still there to to be encountered right right and i think i think you you, you do kind of you do kind of sum it up in a way is that the there are so many elements out there that the that the, the players can either grab onto or bounce off of and everything so, so not only do you have the exploratory nature of it, the the hex crawl part of it, i mean because there's a big part of it is we're literally kind of dropped in the middle of nowhere and we kind of figure out not only figure out this whole new world but how to survive on this whole new world because there's you know alien yeah, like, like the players start is like right there there player <laughs> start and they're like yeah this is doug's map of just the plateau it's amazing mm -hmm. anyway but go on keep going sorry so so there's the you know there's the uh figuring out the setting itself you know because there's things i know there's things like do, do we even dare drink with that you know like like that you know that that pool that looks drinkable like i you know i'm not drinking you drink that or, or you know or the you know the flora and the fauna because you have you know obviously there's there there's either the orms you know i mean well in a future show we'll really del dive into the bestiary of it but you know there are you know you can't really have like a wasteland desert planet without giant worms you know at this point it's pretty much you know part and parcel it's you know it's required um um, but so you so you have the the setting itself which you have to navigate you have the dungeon crawl aspect as you mentioned with like the tombs and such which you you do have to go into and deal with that but you know on another level there's also the social element because as you say there's all these kith that you know these various bands of kith are going around who are all kind of indebted to or almost you know kind of almost worship the ascended masters you know they're these kind of you know not even like like if the kith are kind of not quite human because you know just a war and circumstances have brought them almost into just like kind of this you know um bestial uh just war all the time nature the ascended masters at the same time is that if they ever were human they've gone so far past that or they have they have degenerated into another way you know so so yeah. so then so and like none of this there's like no real like oh this is obviously the good one you know it's like so right. you know there's, there's no one like you can clearly throw in your lot with this and you don't have to worry about any moral complications of it you know so um so there is that level of like all right well if we help out these guys and those guys are going to be angry at us or you know they're going to come get us or, or they hate those guys you know so th it, there's so many different levels to the pearl planet and as you say this is just the plateau this is just this isn't like the this is a section of the purple planet where all this fun stuff is going on too um yeah and I'm, I'm really proud that you know through all the development of the box set we managed to leave so much of the planet open for you know, for creation of the, you know, the, the, the home GM, you know, to like home judge yeah. to do whatever yeah, yeah. they want with purple, like whatever tone, you know, like, you know, for, for me, I know it's, it's like kind of like this, the swords and planet vibe. Like you think back to the covers of like anything Frazetta did for John Carter or, you know, the warlord comic books, like, you know, you have a, you have a death ray in one hand and a saber in the other and, and you're charging through with your companions, you know, to, to, you know, rescue whoever needs rescuing that day you know and but you know and then and then but there's also you know folks can take it you know a little bit towards more like like mcc or post-apocalyptic like it it you can it's a rorschach test for what judges are really passionate and excited about um when they're running running these sorts of games mm -hmm. you know i mean i think i think that's worth exploring a little bit the the kind of the, the, this um the purple planet, parallel on the purple planet was written with the kind of the sword and planet or you know uh the planetary romance vibe in it which is which is very yeah. much like the john carter um you know the kind of again again the i mean i have i have I have a copy of Elmer right here, uh, but you know, again, <laughs> kind of like you, I have yet to delve d dig into this. But I will be, I will be reading this and complete with its complete with its, with its awesome art in this. Oh, year. that's beautiful! So, um, oh my gosh, see, that's awesome! That's <laughs> cool. that's so cool. So that's um, really cool. But 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 the but my 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 point being is that it's um it is this. With, with, at least with the, with the John Carter stuff, there is this, you know, uh, there's a sense of great age, you know, because Mars at this point is dying, you know, Mars is dying out during the John Carter stories because, you know, once it was kind of a wet planet, and now it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's turned into this wasteland, and there's that vibe which is going on with, um, with Purple Planet as well, 
And mm -hmm. although there are kind of relics left over, you know, when you would kind of, we would think of like artifacts in the term of like a post-apocalyptic thing. I, 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 I think that at least the way that I approach the genres is that I feel that there's a distinct difference between the two. I mean, I think, I think part of it might be from the fact is that when I think post-apocalyptic, I'm thinking of a kind of a setting where things have gone to the absolute nadir of, of the way you can go. And then from that, it's kind of like, how do we dig ourselves out of this? Like, how do we find new cool stuff and how do we become this over this? Where I think more in, I, I don't get that so much with the kind of the planetary romance of sword planet i don't feel so much like the need to build up it's more of like how do we adapt and how do we kind of overcome the environment it's like like how, not how do we build it better but how do we kind of adapt ourselves to it and to make it the best situation we have you know which which as yeah. we've been talking about is very much kind of the vibe of purple planet you know you're alien world you have to figure out how things work you have to make your decisions of like what your alliances are going to be um you know there are cool stuff lying around but like where do we get the cool stuff you know um that's kind of been my yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I, th I think you're really on to something there so when you think of um when you think of a western you know the setting is always a character right you know you mm. these 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 sweeping vistas and the tall buttes of the cliffs right and, and the redstone towers and and Robert E. Howard, you know, he was he was living in that environment and and writing from it, and and so when and 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 the same too is like that's probably the distinction between Star Wars versus Star Trek. You know, Star Wars has you look over the, you know the desert of this planet, and 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 it's it's a character in itself, and and same too with so that's what we, you know we use for Purple Planet is is you have you have the you have the Kith. You have the ascended masters, but you also have the place itself, which serves as a character to be to strive against. Mm -hmm. And and you know, there's that there's that aspect of um, you know man versus nature, person versus mm -hmm. nature, which is which is really fundamental to people encountering Purple Planet for the first time. Right. I I think you're. I think that that's a good way to approach it because I think with purple planet and with um you know just basically you know sword and planet stuff and, and anyway the the setting itself is a uh, it, you know it is it is a, it is a character it is an adversary it is you know it is it is yeah, something more to that where necessarily that's not so much the case as I think you would encounter in your post-apocalyptic setting. Like the, the, like there are, there are challenges in it itself, like, okay, this is the radiated zone or something like that, but it feels, it doesn't feel like an actual character itself. And I think that's, I think that's partially uh, has to do with, I can say in the classic post-apocalyptic setting, we're looking at earth, we're looking at, you know, the United States or, you know, whatever, the, the, the stuff which is close at home, where when you take sword and planet, you take, you're literally, it's an alien world. So it's not even, it's not that the, the, the normal stuff has been torn down. It's, it's a completely different place. You know, it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not trying to, it's not trying to find the recognizable amongst the wreckage. It's just trying to make the completely alien understood in a way, I guess, you know, I mean, uh, which I guess, which I guess kind of leads a little bit more into um, kind of the space opera thing. Uh, like the space opera genre itself is, I, I it's, it, it's kind of going about, there's the, the expo, ex, uh, exploratory, expo, exploratory, exploratory, the, the go out and find <laughs> thing. <laughs> um, which, which again, I mean, I think uh, Star Wars, Star Wars does that to the, to the point where uh the, the kind of the single biome planet syndrome that they have is like okay this is the jungle right. planet this is the desert planet or this is the snow planet yeah. and again it's the setting it's it's more like that's the fancy backdrop against where this stuff takes place it's not an actual kind of character in it so mm -hmm. i i think i think you know kind of hashing out what is the difference between sword and planet what is the difference between space opera and what is the difference between post-apocalyptic i think i think really it comes around to the fact is that uh, it is the it is the it is the planet itself, and uh, yeah. what better for because we have an entire you know a, a time uh, entire like ten shows talking about the planet itself and everything. So uh, you know, <laughs> um, and even not even the entire planet, just a plateau on the planet that we right. can extrapolate right. Right. what the rest of the planet might be like. So um, yeah, yeah I, I I don't know. I think I think this was me speaking out loud, but I think I have kind of come to what it is that at least for me makes Purple Planet stand out amongst the other stuff which is going on so mm -hmm. um so 
So the um the, now that we've kind of established what the what the purple planet is like setting wise and you know all the cool aspects to it about it, I said, um, what do you think is like if if somebody has been listening to us for the last you know 20 minutes talk about this and they're starting to get like, okay, all right, what's you know, I'm I'm looking forward to backing this and getting my hands on it or anything like that. What do you think is important for somebody who's going to run Purple Planet to know the peril on the Purple Planet or use it as a setting? I mean, because I think I think there's there's certainly a different there's a different um, there's a different kind of uh, frame of reference in here. And if you're running something mostly because there's it's it's got the hex crawl element and it's an alien world talent as opposed to doing something like the croaking fane, which is very much a traditional dungeon kind of environment stuff. Um, do you have anything that you, do you have anything that like when you ran Purple Planet, um, you know, that you felt like you had yeah. to kind of adjust uh, to you to your standard kind of like, you know, uh, standard dungeon crawl um, kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, mode? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, what, one, one thing to take note of is that there, there's no there's no easy reprieve, right? There's no there's no you're you're not going back to town you know there's there's not there's there's no in at the end of the day where you know the players are going or characters are going to rest their heads and and recover some hit points um and so and so the the mode of play it, you know it, it takes on a little bit more weight perhaps um and that it's it's if i don't know it's not grim and unforgiving but you know to a degree you know you're stuck there and now we have to deal with this situation um you know and i think um Another another piece to take into account is um is it's just it's kind of the a sense of the genre itself. You know, like um I can imagine well when when I was a little kid, you know, and and uh, what a barriers, you know, came out, you know, the the thought of mixing like death rays and swords and that 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 that, that like irked that you know that, that scrubbed me the wrong way, right? You know, like I was a Greyhawk kid, like through and through. Like I want my knights, and I want to believe in my knights. And Pluffet Smelger the Elder, gosh darn it, he was real. And um, and you know, never shall the Twain cross. Um, but you know, but but bringing it, and so so you would want you would want the both the judge and the players to be you know okay with the opportunity of their of their 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 warrior to stumble through this portal to this far flung world you know dig through the sand and just as the math is death orm is kind of crashing down upon him he discovers you know this this death lance and blasts up at the um at the death orm and and you know manages to roll away and you know and and live to tell another tale um and so being being you know comfortable with um with the way that the, the the genres are presented i think is 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 really kind of crucial um well, kind of going yeah. back going back to something we've been talking about like uh like the genre and setting as character i think in i think especially with uh the purple planet where it is it is an alien environment and the the players itself they can't take any sort of they can't rely on what their usual expert ex expectations are you know uh for a uh, standard campaign because you know it might be a wrath or it could be for the forgotten realms or anything like that, but, but there are some kind of baked in it's mostly earth-like and everything so I, mm -hmm. and i think one of the things is in for a situation like this is where i mean you could run a dungeon crawl where you go into you kick over the door you kill whatever is in there you take their stuff and everything like that but if you try with that mentality here i think maybe there's more player stuff but this is something that the judge should be uh, aware of is that they're going to have to i think they're going to have to be up their game especially when it comes to portraying npcs because like, because there mm -hmm. are so many interesting NPCs and the and the NPCs are going to be the kind of the the route through which the players learn about the setting. So I mean, so yeah. if the players if the players are murdering everybody, well then that's fine that they can't figure <laughs> out like don't eat that mushroom or anything like that. But especially when you have the warring factions and you know like okay, are do we side with this kith and you know because they believe they follow this ascended master and all the rest of that. I I think that you know the. Uh, there's there's already a lot of space going on here with the hex crawl, but I think the judge should be prepared to create some interesting, you know, or ad lib interesting characters, or maybe put a little more thought in like the NPC representations, um, because those are going to be the things that the, the players can latch onto and learn more about the world itself. But you know, mm -hmm. well, yeah, it, it's it's um, I'm I'm pleased with how well supported I think um, the judges are. You know, I was going through. Um, the, the random encounter tables um 
and and it, it was fun because we did a really in my opinion i think we did a really good job and that uh, um you know so the, the 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 faster the pcs are progressing um they're the, the faster they're traveling the the more chance they have of stumbling into a a, a dramatically bad encounter whereas if the pcs are you know kind of incrementally crossing you know the the purple planet chances are if they encounter that kith horde it'll be at a distance and 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 the, and the, and, the, and the and the pcs will have a chance to you know respond to it you know whereas if they're if they're charging across the purple planet they they stumble into you know into the midst of this battle and you know and they're you know now all hell's breaking loose and so like there's there's the, we were able to when we when we made you know, parallel and purple plan. We were able to build in these elements that really reinforced kind of thoughtful exploration. Um, and at the same time, like gave you reasons why you had to run across the purple planet as quick as possible. And so, you know, there's, 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 there's a choice there to be made by, by players as, as, as they go exploring. Um, right. All right. And I was going to, I was going to use that as the segue to, you know, we've talked about kind of what the, what the judge has to keep in mind when they're going to be running this, but now also the players have to keep things in mind as well. I think going back to the fact is like, don't murder everybody offhand. You know, there might be times you have to, <laughs> But if you do that, you're not going to learn anything. And then, you know, and nobody's going to yeah. be able to tell you, it's like, don't eat that mushroom. And then you, you go and eat that mushroom in the forest, then bad things are going to happen. But as you say, you, you know, um, the environment itself is, you have to make a choice. You, there are choices like, you know, is because the environment is, it's an alien environment and it's out to get you. So that question is, do, do we, do we prioritize caution you know, in our inner exploration, but, you know, it might be detrimental in the long run. We could end up like dying of thirst or, you know, or right, there's right, a lot right. going on with the weirdling sun and what have you or anything. Or do we just, those mountains look good. Maybe there's a tomb. Let's haul butt over there and try to find something on the off chance. You might run into something that eats you before you said to that mountain or anything. So, <laughs> um, so it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a challenge. It's, you know, I mean, I think if you're, if you're a player and you're, your usual modus operandi is kick the door in and murder everybody in the room. Uh, you, your bones may be littering the waste of the purple planet before too long. So, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I think about like yourself, I think about RPGs way too much, but, um, you know, it, it just, <laughs> Harley, we, we, you do this professionally. There is no thinking about RPGs too much, you know, in fact, <laughs> if well, you can find a way to write off the time that you think about RPGs, technically it's technically, uh -huh. <laughs> but if you were if you were to like if you were to reread Beowulf, right? Like he he never he never I'm stops at the tavern. He never you know you like you know like if anything like the, there's it was it was just it just it was impressed upon me the other day just just how much of our, our modern mo mindset we bring to these fantasy worlds that we want to create and and it's so much so that you know so much is unconscious in our own brain that that we can't really we don't see it well enough to separate it from our games. Mm -hmm. um, but then you, you go to something like purple planet where it's completely alien and there's, and there's, and there's, I mean, I know I said this before, but there's not an end. There's not, there's not a magic shop. There's none, none of those, none of these, none of these things that we carry with our, our modern mindset of like, Oh, well, this is how the world reacts. Like this is how my, my gong farmer is. It's like, no, no, let's make it completely alien, completely new and, and fresh to players so that when they encounter it, it, it it feels that much more real if that makes any sense like there's oh there's 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 not there's not these you know mental you know hangovers that we carry just because we don't know any better mm -hmm. no I, uh, I you're you're absolutely correct i mean i i think it's i think that's the challenge I mean, well it it is it is definitely it's a it's maybe not a challenge but it's something that is there and how you want yeah. to approach it is i think indicative of your play style i mean you could totally do the plank of you know i mean you, you could do the thing where there is a magic shop in every toilet place and like in every they, i mean uh the classic module rat on a stick which allows you to open a dungeon like a like a restaurant franchise <laughs> and stuff like that. So there there is you can do that in that but that's yeah, not the, place yeah. doing it. Uh, the purple planet is not the place to be doing that stuff it, it is definitely yeah. the, uh, the you know it's it's a mystery in the in the, to the sign of i don't know anything about this place and anything and everything could be trying to kill me so uh, so, uh yeah uh so um so i don't know i think i think that kind of sums it up you know in our first half hour of just kind of what the overview of the purple planet is uh and we there's as i say we although it's a one plateau on the purple planet 
there's a surprising amount of depth to it. And uh, in the coming weeks, uh, we're going to be trying to do this roughly every two weeks. Um, so we're at least twice a month anyway. And uh, we'll be delving into uh, all different aspects of the Purple Planet. We talked about the Kith. We'll be talking about the Ascended Masters. We didn't even touch upon Greenstone or, you know, there's, there's so much stuff here, uh, which is waiting to be discovered. And uh, we're going to be doing our best in the, the weeks ahead to get everybody psyched for it, but at the same time, not to spill too many secrets. So if you're watching this, you know, you can still kind of dive into the Purple Purple Planet when your when your judge you know starts running it for you and 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 have some fun of negotiating that setting and you know hitting your wits against the creation of Harley Stroh here which is uh you know no um so uh I think that's good uh Harley any words of uh any words of wisdom uh as we kind of well, or for now and, and maybe maybe this is a secret for for a future show but um if any of our our folks are on the the DCC RPG rocks page. Um, it seems like there's other publishers that are coming up with, you know, potential content for the purple planet. Is that something there, there we can is. touch on? Or is that a... um, I've, I've kind of hinted at it. Um, you know, I've spoken about it on in kind of, uh, there's still things being uh, kind of finalized at this point, but uh, the, one of the reasons we're doing this on backer kit is it allows us to network with other crowdsourcing campaigns. And currently we have a number of third party publishers who are working on their own Purple Planet themed uh, releases. And this is kind of, we are calling this return to the Purple Planet and so much more is, uh, you know, we're going to be focusing on what those are as we get closer. Like we can't spill all the beans now because we still got 120 days to kind of prolong this and everything. <laughs> I, okay, I, fully, I fully intend to reach out to some of those third party people and ask them to come on the show and, you know, maybe talk to themselves uh, and kind of give them the opportunity to say, okay, this is what I'm working on for the Purple Planet. So, um, but yeah, so there's 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 a lot of stuff going on. I might get notes tomorrow. Joe is like, you should talk about it more. But if that's the case, then then, then my <laughs> apologies. But you know, I'm I'm trying to. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, you know, like the, one of the very coolest things about DCC is like, no matter how awesome you know the adventure you write or I write, you know, like it becomes that much cooler when you know when Doug gives it a cover. And then it's like, oh wait, wait, but th this is what's happening now. And then like you know, then somebody reskins our adventures. You know, James Smith or Wayne or somebody takes that adventure and like and then all of a sudden it's like oh my god like that was the coolest idea ever like why didn't i ever think of doing that with sailors and then anyways so as 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 more creators get involved as more people like lean into these these imaginary worlds that we love so much inevitably they just like they get new depth and they just become that much neater and there's there's uh, i think there's a lot of potential there to to expand you know what is you know it's not Harley Stroh's Purple Planet. It's you know, it's 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 you know, it belongs to the DCC community as 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 they're making it something you know much cooler than it than it's seen. That's always that's always the sign that something has has grown has arrived, just grown bigger than just you. And you hopefully that happens before you get tired of actually creating stuff for it. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so but it's always that it's also no so you know they'll leave it in the hands of somebody else under good so you can take a break and step away from the purple planet from time to time as as you know, I mean, it's only been 10 years. So, you know, I mean, hopefully, hopefully you're all rested up and ready to come back. So. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm so stoked. Like you, like, yeah, Doug and I have big plans, big plans. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Just well, you wait, Curtis. Yep, I think that's good enough for you know we don't want to we don't want to use up all our content in the first show so uh, so we will be back I think uh, if I'm looking on the on the calendar uh, I believe today is the third so uh, October seventeenth same bat time same back channel we will be back and we'll be talking more about the purple planet and the return to the purple planet and this whole big event so don't miss out so um, so thank you Harley thank you very much for your time and uh, everybody else. We'll uh, stay, stay tuned and uh, learn more. All right. So, All right. Goodbye. Right. <laughs>